Hello everyone, it's Reza Rad from Radacad and today I want to talk about Power BI report server for you. What features you get as a Power BI on-premises, how to set up Power BI report server, what are the limitations, what are the features, pros and cons, and how the licensing of that works. To learn about Power BI report server, watch this video. So what is the Power BI report server? Uh, Power BI is a cloud technology. It's a cloud technology for reporting. Uh, however, it has also an on-premises solution. To get the on-premises solution of that, you need a technology, a tool called Power BI report server. Power BI report server is an instance of reporting services, SQL Server reporting services that you can use and you can uh, download it. It has its own licensing, obviously. You can download it, you can set up the report server. It's a whole server hosting environment that you set up on-premises. And then you can host Power BI reports in it. You can also host reporting services in it. Uh, so it's a shared, uh, not, not shared, it's a centralized uh, hosting environment. You can have your Power BI reports as well as your reporting services reports and your Power BI reports will be, would be fully interactive. Uh, so this is Power BI Report Server and how we can set it up and how we can install it. First, you need to download Power BI Report Server from the link um, of Power BI Report Server. Uh, to download it, you download the Power BI Report Server itself is a file that you can install it and you need to also download a Power BI Desktop version called Power BI Desktop Report Server. Uh, that is a Power BI desktop version that you need to create Power BI reports with it. You cannot have Power BI reports installed, um, uh, uploaded with just a normal Power BI desktop. Power BI desktop report server is slightly behind the normal Power BI desktop, few months delayed from that, so some of those features doesn't work. Uh, but still, majority of features works in Power BI uh, desktop report server. Okay, so that you download these two and then uh, you get the setup. Uh, so what is the setup instruction for Power BI report server? First, you download the uh, report server, you install it. When you install it, it asks you uh, about some of the configurations. And what are the configurations important uh, part of report server? Just one thing to notice before going further, if you already have a reporting services installed on your machine, you don't need to worry about that at all. Uh, you can have multiple instance of reporting services. You can have reporting services server and you can have Power BI report server. You can have multiple instances. Or you can just install a clean install if there is no previous installation. So when you install it, you have to configure it. You go to report server configuration and in the report server configuration, there are a number of configuration you have to make. First, you have to set up your database. Reporting services, configure, reporting services or report server configuration needs a database to work with. And that database should be SQL Server database. That means you need to have SQL Server database engine installed as well. Uh, so you set up the report server database. Usually it's two database, report server and report server temp DB. These two are um, holding everything uh, that is uploaded in the report server. After setting up these two, you also need to set up the web server, the server that you have uh, Power BI uh, reports or any other reports talking with that server. You also need to set up the uh, web portal that you access to the report. So web server and web portal. You go to each section, enable it. You may need to change port if that port is already used. Then you enable it and uh, you get it working. So that's the setup and configuration for the report server. After setup, the con setup and configuration, now it comes to using the reports. So let's see how we can use the report server and upload a Power BI report into the report server. Let's check it out. In this section, I'm going to show you the report server. As you can see, report server configuration manager is already here and I'm in this environment and I already set up my databases uh, for getting the report server working you need to set up databases first which is already there i already set up my web server url and also my web portal url these are a configuration that you need to do now in the background you see my uh, report server web portal it's fully local address and i can see a power bi report already here uh, uploaded so now let's talk about how you can upload a power bi uh, report into this environment you need Power BI, uh, reports, uh, Power BI Desktop Report Server. As you can see, I have two Power BI Desktop here. Normal one, 
and a Power BI desktop report server. And um, I'm going to close my normal Power BI desktop and open the file with my Power BI desktop report server. Uh, and after opening it, I will uh, publish it either from there or publish it from the report server itself. There are two ways that you can publish a Power BI uh, report into the report server. One from Power BI desktop. So here in this Power BI desktop, um, I'm opening a Power BI report. This is the Power BI report that I have open. Uh, if I want to publish it to the report server, you can see there is no publish section here. So I have to go to the file and click on save as. In the save as menu, um, I have the option to publish it to the Power BI report server and my Power BI report server uh, URL is already here. If I have folders, I would be able to see folders and also navigate through them. So I can either publish from here or from Power BI report server itself. Um, so save as from Power BI desktop or uh, Power BI report server itself. When you go to Power BI report server, there's an upload button that you can click on it and upload a report in there. So these are two ways that you can upload. Now I have a Power BI report, which I click on it and you can see it's fully interactive Power BI report um, hosted in uh, on-premises solutions of Power BI. It is fully interactive. I can change slicers. I can slice and dice data exactly like what you have in the normal Power BI uh, website. There are a few things that you need to consider, however. When you have a Power BI report and you want to schedule it to refresh, um, every Power BI report can have um, a dataset configuration. Uh, so for that dataset configuration, you need to make sure that the, if this is a file, that file need to be loaded from the um, shared folder, not from just like a normal folder. So here I have a Power BI file, which is using just like a normal um, folder and normal uh, access to the file. If I go to the manage dataset of my Power BI report, I would see that it is coming from, uh, uh, from a normal file in the data source setting of that. When it comes from a normal file folder, I cannot schedule it to the refresh. So I go to the data source section and you can see it is giving me an error that schedule refresh is not available because it is coming from network path. It's not coming from network path shared folder drive. So you cannot schedule it to refresh. That is one of the, let's say, limitations with this method. Now I have another Power BI report and that Power BI report is sourcing from a shared folder. And for that, uh, I would have um, an option easily to, um, to set it up to schedule it to refresh. So let's go and check out that one. Um, so this is a new Power BI report and this is using a scheduled, uh, sorry, a shared uh, folder. When I go to the manage, I go to data sources, I can see that this is a shared folder address and I can enter my username and password. This is local username and password Windows authentication. I enter my username and password. My username is called gateway user, but you don't need anything about gateway. This is just my username called this way because I used it previously for other gateway operations. Um, I enter the information, test the connection, and seems everything successfully safe. So when I have created the connection, then I can easily schedule it to refresh. Um, and the thing about schedule refresh is that you need Power BI, um, sorry, not Power BI, the SQL Server agent service up and running because the scheduled refresh of Power BI report server is based on SQL Server agent up and running. Um, so I open SQL Server Management Studio just to start that service. Usually that's a service that automatically is starting. Um, in my machine, I set it manual. I connect to my database instance um, engine to be able to show you how this works. So my local instance, Windows authentication, and you can see SQL Server agent is stopped. I hit start and turn on this service. Um, this is the service that runs the scheduling of Power BI report server because there is no website. So this is the scheduler for your service. Now it is up and running. I can see there is one job, which is historically not only one job here. 
I go to the Power BI report server and I create a new schedule refresh plan. I call it something, uh, my report schedule, um, and I start to schedule the refresh plan. So I go to the edit schedule. Now the good thing about uh, schedule here is that you have much more flexibility compared to the Power BI website. Here you have the option to select daily, hourly, weekly, uh, start and end, and the time. E everything is possible here. In the Power BI website you don't have that much flexibility on your, um, on your scheduled refresh. I set up a scheduled option, in my case it is daily, running for only a couple of days at 2 a.m. every day, um, and I uh, apply this. This behind the scene will go and create the SQL Server agent job for me. So when I click on apply, it takes a little bit of time to create uh, um, this uh, job for me. I can also go and check the SQL Server agent to see if the job is created. Usually after this process I would see the job is created, but just checking here, refreshing, no, it's not created yet, so I have to wait a little bit. Um, one important thing here is that SQL Server agent uh, is part of SQL Server installation, so usually you get it as part of SQL Server installation, and it is needed obviously for scheduling your report to be refreshed. If your report is alive, you don't need it. So my scheduling is created right now. And if I go to my jobs, I can see that there is a job created for that refresh. You can even edit the job from here, but it is always better to edit it from the place that you created to have a more centralized uh, configuration. So here you go. We have an import data report that we scheduled it to refresh and it works perfectly fine. Um, and it is fully interactive report as well. Previously in Power BI report server, about a year ago, you couldn't do import data or scheduled refresh, but right now you can do import data and scheduled refresh as well. You can also have other types of connections. In the next example, I'm going to show you a live connection example of Power BI. This was an example of uh, import data. So let's have a look at live connection. I have Power BI uh, desktop again opening um, the Power BI desktop report server and this time I'm going to connect to my instance of analysis services. I have already an instance of analysis services on my machine. Um, so creating a connection to SQL Server analysis services and I make sure it is a live connection, local instance. Click on OK. Uh, this will take a little bit of time to think to create a connection. Um, I can show you the analysis services um, tabular model that I'm connecting to. It is in my management studio. I can show it to you right there. So I'll go to management studio and I connect to analysis services, my local instance, and under this you see databases and there is an adventure works model here. So in Power BI Desktop, I see the same adventure works model. I select it and I click on OK. Uh, this will create a live connection, and a uh, live connection uh, brings all the tables, relationships, calculations, everything. As you see here, it says live connection. Now I start building a very simple sample report by selecting internet total sales um, as the measure, um, and slicing and dicing that by a field from customer like education. Uh, that would be sales by education. I also create a copy of that and um, create a map visual this time instead of by education by the city which customer is based on and I change it to a map. So very simple um, Power BI report. It has only a couple of um, visualization, a map visual and a column chart, but it is a live connection. Now I want to uh, publish this into the report server. So I save this report. I can publish it again from here or from the report server itself. I just save it in this scenario and upload it from the report server itself. So I go to the report server, upload this uh, Power BI report, and you can see it's like in a second because it's live connection. It doesn't have any data, it is live. And when I click on it, it works perfectly fine. 
you don't need even to set up a gateway, anything at all. Compared to Power BI website, you should have done a lot of configuration for getting this working, especially coming from on-premises data source. But here, if I go to manage data set, it is already everything set up. Um, it is using the uh, credential of the user logged in in the data source. I can see it is passing that credential through the data source. I do not need any gateway. I do not need to set up the permission, things like that around it. It's much easier to set up uh, and get it working compared to the uh, to the way that you have uh, created a live connection in Power BI website, much easier. So you can see this is a live connection example. Similar to this, you can have also direct query connection example as well. Power BI give you a uh, Power BI report server give you ability to have all types of connections, direct query, um, the live connection as you have seen, uh, import data and scheduled refresh, all of that possible in the same place. Now let's wrap up the discussion in a second. So you learned a number of uh, pros and cons about Power BI report server. First, a uh, good thing about Power BI report server is that you don't need gateway. Why? Gateway is something that you need only in Power BI service, in website, because through the gateway, you will connect the uh, uh, Power BI data set to the data source. And here, you don't need the gateway. So that's one good thing, as you have seen, it's really easy to set up a live connection in Power BI report server. Another thing, all types of connections are supported. Live connection, gate, um, uh, direct query connection, import data, they are all supported. Uh, what is the good thing number three is that you get all of these solutions on-premises, everything on-premises. There are still some companies who want to do solutions on-premises, not in cloud. So Power BI report server can be a good solution for them. And the last thing you need to uh, consider is that uh, there's a disadvantage. And that disadvantage is features that you have in Power BI service are not available in Power BI report server. For example, dashboard. We do not have dashboard in the report server. Or Q&A. You do not have Q&A in the report server. Uh, usage metrics that we get in the dashboard. Alerts that you define on the dashboard. Any features that comes with the dashboard is not also available in the report server. If you want to create your usage metrics, you have to develop your own usage metrics. You can, but it's not something built in for you. So there are some um, limitations compared to the Power BI service when you do the Power BI report server. However, pros and cons, different companies may choose different solutions. Uh, what about licensing of Power BI report server? When you use report server, you can get it through two ways of licensing. Number one is you can get it with Power BI premium licensing, which is uh, starting at capacity nodes and you pay for that, like $5,000 per, per capacity, the first node, P1 node per month. Um, but there's another plan as well. If you already have SQL Server Enterprise licensing, this second plan may be even better for you. Uh, with this SQL Server Enterprise licensing, you can pay for software assurance, which is a slightly more um, compared to the normal enterprise licensing. With that, you get the report server, and then you can start sharing your reports through report server. So these are the two licensing options available. In majority of enterprises, they already have SQL Server Enterprise licensing, so the second plan usually works quite good for them. Um, so what is the point of decision for you? How you can choose, is the report server a good option for you or not? First, if your company wants everything to be on, um, not on cloud, everything to be on-premises, Power BI Report Server is your only choice. Second, if uh, you have difficulties paying the per, license, per user licensing or per capacity licensing, and you already have enterprise licensing, software assurance is not that much expense on top of it. So you can get quite good feature with that. And the third, uh, you get some benefits with report server, benefits like having uh, less hassle, setting up the gateway, things like that. But on the other hand side, you should be also careful that report server needs someone to look after, you need a report server admin. So bottom line, Power BI report server is a great on-premises feature of Power BI. Go and check it out and let me know what you think. I already written a blog post about all of this information. Go check my blog post. If you like to see more videos like that, go ahead and subscribe to the button below. Thank you.